Okay, ladies, not ladies, but uh, ladies and gentlemen out there in the internet world, right? All right, guys, how's it going? Today we are going to continue with 10-2, part 2 this time. We're going to be talking about how to divide. Okay, we're going to simplify radicals using division. And very similar to multiplication, okay, I have that, if I have the nth root of A and the nth root of B, and they're real numbers, and b does not equal 0, then the quotient of the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b is equal to one big nth root of a over b. What that means is that as long as, as, long as the, the uh, <coughs> excuse me, radicals have the same index, you can combine them together in one radical. If I had the square root of 15 over the square root of 3, being that they're both square roots, being that they both have an index of 2, this is going to go ahead and simplify into the square root of 15 over 3, which equals the square root of 5. That's what this property allows you to do, okay? Just like the multiplication. You can combine more uh, different radicals that are being multiplied into one radical as long as they all have the same index. Same thing with division. For example, what is the simplest form of the, of the equation? Ah, it's not really the equation. It should really say, what is the simplest form of the radical? Sorry about that. Okay. So, let's check it out. Let's figure this out. Well, I have a square root of 18x to the fifth divided by square root of 2x to the third. Well, this can turn into one big square root of 18x to the fifth over 2x cubed. Now, now it becomes just a nice, easy division problem. This is going to become the square root of 9x squared, which equals... 3x, not 3x squared, just 3x, because the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of x squared is x. Why? Because 2 goes into 2 one time. Remember, you look at the index. In this case, there's no index, so that means the index is 2. 2 goes into 2 one whole time. Therefore, you have 1x that can come out and no remainders. B. Square root of 162y to the fifth divided by square root of 3y squared gives you one big fat square root of 162y to the fifth divided by 3y squared, which is going to equal the square root of, let's see, 54, yep, y cubed. Now, 54, i got to break that down. 54, I can break it down to 6 times 9. What's the square root of 9? So this is going to be 3. What's the square root of y cubed? y with one y left over, correct? Okay, and you also have a 6 left over. So this is going to be 3y times the square root of 6y. Does that make sense? Okay. You sure? Okay, now... Whenever you have a radical in the denominator, you must complete something that's called rationalize the denominator. You can never have a radical left in the denominator. It's just not a mathematical legal process. You cannot do it. It just cannot be done. So what has to happen here? Well, this is very simple. In order for you to get rid of a radical, you have to multiply okay, a radical to the numerator and the, de and the denominator that will cancel out the denominator. So let's think about this. I have a square root of 2. How many 2's do I have in there right now? Someone said I had two twos. No. How many 2's do I have in here right now? Okay, someone said again that I had two twos. How many 2's do I have in here right now? One 2, right guys? One, two, correct? Okay. How many twos do I need to pull one out? So what do I have to multiply this by? 
No, by a square root of 2. Because now I'm going to have square root of 2 over, what's square root of 2 times square root of 2? 2. Remember when you multiply the same square root to itself, it cancels out. If you have a square root of A times the square root of A, that equals A. Why? Because the square root of A times the square root of A equals the square root of A squared, which equals A. So whenever you multiply the same exact square roots together, you cancel out the square root and the inside number becomes the value. So that's it. You're done. You don't have a square root in the denominator anymore. You're done. Bye-bye. See you later. Have a good day. Does that make sense, guys? Hello? Okay. For this next one, <laughs> I can simplify this a little bit. This is 2 over, what is truly the square root of 2 cubed x cubed? What's the square root of 2 cubed, guys? How many 2's are here, guys? There's 3 2's, correct? So a 2 and a 2 comes out as a 2. What's the square root of x cubed? An x comes out, and I have a 2 and an x left over. So what do I have to multiply to the top and bottom to get rid of that radical 2x? That's right. You're going to multiply by a square root of 2x. Because I need another 2 and another x to complete that square. So this is going to be 2 times radical 2x over 2x times, what's the square root of 2x times the square root of 2x? 2x. So I'm going to have 2 square root of 2x over 4x squared which then reduces to square root of 2x over 2x squared. Look at what I did, guys, because that's very, very important. Take a look at what I did, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, how did I simplify at the end? Yeah, 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 goes into 4 two times, so I'm left with, with that. Okay? Does that make sense? Talk to me, guys. Okay, let's move on then. Let's practice. All right, simplify each. All right, the first thing I'm going to do here, first of all, is I, I want to I wanna, uh, try to simplify if I can. So this is going to be one-fifth times the square root of 15 over 20. How can I simplify that? You can divide both top and bottom by 5, so this becomes 3 fourths, correct? Yes. Okay, now, doesn't this break up to now be, this is going to be a square root of 3 over 5 times the square root of 4. What's the square root of 4? 2. two. So this is going to become square root of 3 over 10. Very good. Because square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10. Yes, no, maybe, kind of, sort of. Talk to me, my friends. Okay, number two. Well, this is a real easy one. This becomes square root of 8 over over 10, guys. Square root of 100 is 10. And the square root of 8, how does that break down? That's 4 times 2, so that breaks up into 2 square root of 2 over 10. The square root of 4 is 2, and there's 1, 2 left over. And then 2 square root of 2 over 10 simplifies to become square root of 2 over 5, because I reduced. Talk to me, guys. All right. Good stuff. I like it. All right. Square root of 6 over square root of 27. Let's see what I can do here. I got 6 over 27. How can I simplify this? Yeah, I can divide 3 to top and bottom. So this will become 2 ninths, right? Which breaks up into square root of 2 over square root of 9, which becomes square root of 2 over 3. Excellent, son. Excellent. Fantastic. Fantastic. Does that make sense, guys? Sir. I'm sorry? Here I just divided by 3 to top and bottom. 
Here? No, I just broke it up into the top and the bottom. Okay. 3 square root of 20 over three square, uh, 2 square root of 4. Well, this becomes 3 halves times square root of 20 over 4. What's the square root of 20 over 4? So this is 3 square root of 5 over 2. Because you can't break down square root of 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5. So square root of 5 is what you have left over there. Talk to me, people. Okay. For number 5, can I simplify here in this case? No, right? So this is basically, i got to get rid of that radical 5. So I have to rationalize. So I'm going to multiply by square root of 5 to both top and bottom. So that's going to be 4 square root of 5 over... 5. Remember, guys, square root of 5 times square root of 5 equals square root of 25, which equals 5. Any square root times its exact identical square root equals the radicand only. So square root of 5 times square root of 5 is just 5. Square root of 7x times square root of 7x is just 7x. Square root of 15a times square root of 15a is just 15a. When you multiply the identical radicals together, identical, okay, you go ahead and just give me the answer of the radicand. Okay, number six. Now, I, I, you would think I can, but four and three, they're never going to simplify, right? So you can't combine them. But what you can do is, which I think is where you're going, two over five radical three, right? Okay, great. What do I need to get rid of in the denominator? Yes, sir. The radical 3, the square root of 3. So I'm going to multiply square root of 3 to both top and bottom, giving me 2 square root of 3 over 5 times 3 is 15. Boom, you're done. Talk to me, guys. Good? All right, brother. All right. Square root of 5 over square root of 3. I can't simplify the insides of these. So I'm going to have to rationalize. I need to get rid of the denominator, so I'm going to multiply square root of 3 to both top and bottom. So that's square root of 15 over, over 3. Done. You cannot simplify a radical with a whole number. Sometimes people will say, oh, square root of 15 divided by 3, oh, that's square root of 5. No, that is wrong. You cannot take away whole values from a radical. You cannot. It just doesn't work, guys. So please don't do that. Next, number 8. What do I have to get rid of here? The square root of 3 in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply square root of 3 to both top and bottom, to both numerator and denominator giving me square root of 6 over 2 times 3, which is 6. Done. Does that make sense, boys? Okay. How can I simplify that? How can I simplify square root of 6 over 6? I cannot take whole numbers away from radicals. They're two different things. We had just gone over that for number seven, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, next. Here, I have a bunch of x's and y's, so I'm going to first try to simplify as much as I can. So this is one-fourth times one big fat radical, 3x squared y cubed over 5xy cubed. This will simplify to become one-fourth square root of 3x over 5. Right? Because the y cubes and the y cubes go bye-bye. There's one x down here, so one of those x's goes bye-bye. Now, let's rewrite this as one-fourth times the square root of 3x over the square root of 5. 
How do how do I get rid of that square root of five down there? I rationalize. Good job. So this is going to become square root of 15x over, no, 4 times, so that's 20. Can I take away a 5 from the 15 and the 20? No, because one is in radical form and the other is in whole number form, and you can't do that. Hey, last but not least, for number 10, I've got 1 third times 1 big fat radical 15xy over 10xy cubed. What does that simplify to? You got one third. Come on, guys. How can I simplify 15 and 10? Take away a 5 from both top and bottom. So I have 3 halves. Good. No, the x is cancel. 1y goes bye-bye, and I have a y squared down here. So then this becomes... One third square root of three over square root of two y squared. But what's the square root of, of uh, y squared? One. So this becomes square root of three over three y square root of two. Can I leave my answer like this? No. I need to rationalize. So I'm going to multiply square root of two to both top and bottom. So my answer will be square root of six over. Over 6y. Very good. Can I simplify that square root of 6 and that 6 of the whole number? No. And bingo. That's the lesson, my brothers. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.